I can't help but to think this concerns the whole human world. AI revealed its strength that cannot be surpassed by a professional Go player. So losing to the AI for the first time must have been quite a shock. I was quite stubborn, so I didn't really listen to what the great teacher said. But when I played against the AI, I could tell that the AI was stronger than me 100%. I'm saying that watch AI and change how you behave. Half of what people say is usually false. AI people think that the human brain is also an AI. What? What? Would very advanced AI look something like the human brain? On the Contrarily, the question becomes, why can't we? So we'll create a brain? Well, that's interesting. I'm really excited and thrilled to be here today. We have great guests joining us, and I'm sure we all enjoy our dialogue. Ueno-san, congratulations on your successful defense in the Women's Kisei Tournament. Thank you. You won the most last year, didn't you? Yes, I did. You won the most among professional goal players, including male. Yes, I was very surprised. Do you have any secret? A secret? No, I was just doing the best I can each game, one by one, then... Oh, Hachi-san, you work very hard, don't you? Yes, I do. I have a study group with Ueno-san and about a dozen of young professionals, and that's what I'm having fun most. I was told that you are considered to be the leader in AI research in the Go community. No, recently I'm learning more from Ueno-san and her generation. For how long are you doing this? I first became interested around 2010. Back then, people thought of me as someone having a peculiar hobby. As we are going to talk about AI today, we are joined by one of the world leading authorities in this field, Matsuo-san. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Last week, I had the pleasure of observing an international symposium, and I had thought everyone working on AI would think more or less in the same way, but what I saw was different in that diverse opinions were expressed and there seems no fixed approach, no predetermined direction. Is my understanding correct? Well, it depends on how deep you want to see. For example, the opinions of experts on what AI can do and what risks there are in the future are quite different from what is generally believed. And the experts themselves aren't that far apart. However, when it comes to the details or distant future, opinions start to diverge. 
We have already started talking about this, but today our plan is to have this roundtable discussion on the theme of AI, Go and humans. I belong to the Tokyo College, an institution at the University of Tokyo, and one of its key theme is the digital revolution and the future of humanity. Today, I hope to explore around that theme. Already five or six years ago, the Go AI surprised us by beating the world best Go player because machine won over human intelligence. But now, about five years later, what has been happening in each field? In other words, what has been happening in the Go world and how far has AI progressed after five years? At the same time, I think that this is not only about Go, but also concerns the human world as a whole. AI has become stronger than human in Go, as the AI is going to be used in more areas in the human world, the human AI interaction will become very important. The Go community experience is so pioneering that I think it can offer insights. And that's why I decided to invite experts in each of the fields to come and talk to us today. I have already requested participants to think about the topic they want to talk about or questions they want to raise. So I'm sure they have come up with something so that I can just follow their themes during the course of today. First of all, what do you want to ask Matsuo-san? Okay. I would like to ask how the position of professional Go players has changed after AI became widespread compared to before the AI became widespread and how do you think about it? Who want to go first? Well, let me go first. I want to say first that my generation, I am already 37 years old, and the Ueno-san's generation may have a very different perception of the situation. For my generation, the initial shock of losing to AI must have been quite strong. I was commenting on an AlphaGo game, and I didn't anticipate that the human would lose to the first game at all, but defeat it. I was commenting on the game on the internet, and the viewers told me later that it was like a wake. After the game, I went to the Nihon Kiin and had sushi with about 10 young professionals, and some said they would go back to their hometowns. But in the phase of accepting AI that followed, I think Go players became rather flexible. That's my impression. And they called AI as AI sensei, and they were often saying AI sensei said this and that. Having seen AI plays better than humans, however, I'm a little worried when I think about what kind of value I can add. So that's kind of uh, something I'm thinking about. What about you, Ueno-san? Well, when AlphaGo came out, I didn't know whether it was strong or not. And it deployed many moves that I wouldn't have imagined. So I wondered what could become of the future of Go. But surprisingly, the nature of Go itself hasn't changed that much. And AI is quite accepted now. I mean, I was happy that the AI was born. As a Go amateur, until then, strongest players were professionals. There were no one above them, and I thought they had all the answers. But now they have relativized and have placed below the AI. That makes me wonder, who are the Go professionals then? Have the reactions from the ordinary Go enthusiasts changed? or the way you deal with them changed in any way? Well, not much changed in a direct sense. 
But for example, as a professional, I play games with amateurs and give them advice and suggestions about the move. But I'm doing so under pressure, thinking that they go home and ask the AI and they could get totally different answer. So I should think well before speaking. Also, the AI plays a lot of moves that we have been saying bad for 100 years. Then those who are watching the AI might think, the move I played last time or 5Q players move was better than the professionals. That happens. I can't say things like, this is the right move, casually any longer. So I feel pressure a bit. Talking about the AI, people say that in the game of Go, when you play a move, you n always know the logic behind it, whether the move is good or bad. But AI simply plays without giving any reasons, so you often left wondering why such a move was chosen. Would it become explainable sometime or someday? Even now, I think that by showing the procedures, people can understand the reasons in some situations. And also, we can create technology to explain this in human language. So I think that it will become a little easier to understand. But in the end, it is difficult to explain why a particular move was valued more than the others. So there will inevitably remain parts that cannot be fully explained. Can you understand all? Are you always convinced when the AI says this is better? No, no, sometimes I don't understand at all. So I go through the procedure over and over again and ask AI to see how it would react and compare that against how I would have reacted. And then I gradually feel I understand better. The study group we jointly run, I think that Ueno-san always comes up with excellent study method. Even with AI, lower-ranked players haven't got more chance of winning or upset much results did not increase because good players understand and digest situations better. I feel that the stronger and better players widened the gap. This study method is like asking questions to AI to obtain pieces necessary to complete a jigsaw puzzle of understanding. Asking questions to AI blindly, therefore, won't advance your understanding. Instead, you need to identify the right combination of moves to ask AI for information so that you can figure out the best move in a given situation. So it's like a science experiment, I guess. The sequence of questions that Ueno-san's group is asking, and they're saying like, well, this can be used in the real match, makes me feel that they are learning very efficiently. Oh, thank you very much. I heard that you keep record in your own notebook. Yes, I think that by summarizing the discussions we have together at the AI lab in my own notebook afterwards, I thought it would be like an output. It can point our attention to different changes, so I think this is a very good idea. Sometimes when I look at the summary notes, I am very impressed, I'm really impressed. AI data is so big that I often forget. That happens quite often. I feel I need to memorize a lot more in detail than before. In the past, I had rough understanding of the game, like when the pattern is like this, it's okay, etc. But now, if I place one stone in one square away, the response by AI changes more frequently than before, so I have to go back to Ueno-san's notes to be reminded of the situation. So the note is a great learning material, so you don't want to publicize a notebook. Mm, no, that's not easy, maybe in about 10 years time. I think you said earlier that the Go has become a little more detailed nowadays. But when I look at various fields, I have a sense that half of what people say is a lie. 
For example, when a skilled workers do visual inspections, they would say things like, this is good, this is not good, and this is not how it should be. If you use AI to verify it, it's half right and half false. Healthcare is probably the same. By that I mean, we don't make mistakes about obviously okay and obviously not okay for sure. However, there are a lot of very subtle things in between. This is where they construct their own theories, their own know-how, and speak self-importantly. And probably that is how humans show off. I have become acutely aware of this for the past few years. So OKs and not OKs are matching, so we can learn a lot from there. But the middle area is not so precise. So if the AI can clean that up, I think it will become easier to master skills. Yes, I understand what you're saying very well. It happens in many situations. Well, in the past, if a great teacher said something like this, everyone would agree and play Go in the same way. And as a result, the way people played was skewed towards the teaching. And those who follow well tended to have better chance of winning. And AI tells us moves we thought were good are bad, or that the moves we thought were bad are good. So I feel that we are in the process of sorting things out. On the other hand, AI sometimes makes mistakes, and I think this is because the game of Go is quite deep. And sometimes AI struggles, what appears to be very obvious for us, or by far the first choice of move of AI happens to be incomprehensible for humans. I think it's interesting to see what humans are good at and what AI is good at are quite different in Go. In other words, there is a still room for development. That's what it means, I'm sure. Yes, that's right. Hopefully, developed together, that's I hope, but the information coming from AI is much more, though. Since ueno is here today, I would like to ask you this. Recently, maybe a little before the AI, female Go players have become performing well. AI should have no gender, a female or male, shouldn't there? Then, is there any gender difference in human Go? Were there any difference between men and women that have prevented women from making career in Go? Well, I don't think there is. But with the AI, for example, as mentioned earlier, if a great teacher says this is good, then we had to trust. Oh, well, that was the situation. And I was quite stubborn, so I didn't really listen to what the great teacher said. But when I played against AI, I could 100% that the AI is better, so I pay attention. And I think that made me better. So you didn't listen much before. That's right, I didn't pay attention if I do not agree. So I was a kind of person. But you listen to AI, yes, because I thought there must be an area I was better at than the humans. But with AI, it doesn't seem like that. I thought I could trust AI other than prediction or anything AI is better at. Watching how Ueno-san examines, I get the impression that naturally understand AI's strong and weak points and that your brain is able to sort them out. In a situation where deeper search is warranted, you do, let's do more search. When intuition tells that the human would never understand why, but probably AI is uh, better, then you just accept the AI's suggestion. When I watch how Ueno-san and young professionals work, I feel that they tell the difference and they use AI accordingly. 
Also, when I saw many women's professional playing well, and Rina Fujisawa Sensei and others winning many games, I am very much encouraged, or we are all encouraged, that if we work hard, we can go even higher. I think that uh, Rina Fujisawa-san and Ueno-san winning so much make even younger women professionals believe that they can win, which is first and foremost difference. Did you initially think you would lose? Well, I think I lost often when I respected the opponents too much. If you trust the opponent's moves too much in the game, you can't win, can you? Right. If the opponent plays a move with a smack look on the face, I tend to think, oh, okay, I see. And accept the move is right and good. But I think that sort of situation has decreased a lot. Then do you think that there is a little relation between arrival of the AI and the female professional having better uh, situation? I feel that way. Now, shall we ask Ueno-san to pose a question or topic? Well, this is a very elementary question, but where did AI appear from in the first place? Okay. The name AI was coined in 1956. At that time, computers had just been invented, and the world was getting excited about the various things that could be done with computers. For example, it can calculate faster and could calculate ballistics. It could tell more accurately than humans where the bullet would land. So people thought computer would soon become more intelligent than human, so coined a word artificial intelligence. The a word artificial has a slightly negative connotation, such as artificially created or pretended or fake. The field of science to create an artificial intelligence, though not genuine but man-made, was created in 1956. Initially, everyone thought it could be done in no time at all, that within a year or two it would surpass human intelligence. They were very optimistic about it. Indeed, initial outcomes were spectacular. But then, the pace of progress decelerated gradually. No matter how much they tried, they couldn't get close to human intelligence. That's interesting. That is why we have been doing this for about 60 years now. I was surprised that uh, the AI has been around for a long time. Yes, it has been around for some time now, and we have been trying to create human-like intelligence, but more we tried, the more we discovered how amazing human intelligence is, and the more we were devastated. However, in the 2010s, deep learning emerged, and it began to achieve remarkable results in some areas that have been considered difficult until now. So people renewed their hope and excited that this time we can do this. I understand that the Go is played according to a set of rules, regardless of gender. So if an AI learns those rules, it doesn't matter whether the player is male or female. However, in a more general sense, when we think about general applications such as Matsuo-san is doing, for example, in the search for consumer preferences, we naturally expect to find biases such as gender differences and age differences in the results, or maybe national differences. If AI is created for humans, Without considering these factors, I feel that the biases of the real world would be directly incorporated into the AI through the data you feed. How do you think about this? 
Exactly, as you say, if we create AI based on the data of the current human society, various uh, prejudices and discriminations will appear in the data as is. So our recent slogan is, AI's fault is our lesson. If you get a trained model of AI that is deciding on gender attributes per se, recruitment, that means it is coming from the data you thought. So you should learn from it, and we should try not to use such data and use such learning to change our current problematic practice. That's something we can all need to do. The values we have now today is the value of today, and they may change completely in 10 years' time. If AI doesn't respond to the changes happening in the human society, then it could create a problem. Do AIs respond to each other? When you use old data, that kind of thing inevitably comes in. So in order to prevent such situation, we need to use latest data. We are also doing research on how to correct such obviously bad decisions we are making in real life. I think this is an area where everyone is working hard to improve. I think the introduction of AI in the Go world and the response to it can inform us about how human society in general can deal with AI in the future and this is something I said earlier. But on the other hand, I also feel that there are some differences in this respect. That difference exists even in the Go world. AlphaGo Zero was an AI that was created without using any human game record data, and it came out about four or five years ago. But there were calls to create more human-like AI, so AI learned from human game records was created at some point that was maybe three, four years ago. On the other hand, young professionals who are winning now are trying to make their games closer to the AI. So after five years, what happens to that human-like AI is that I feel very strange. When I watch how AI that was fit the game record of 10 years ago behaves, I think, oh, I used to play like that once upon a time, and I feel very uncomfortable. Go players today play more like AI, so even our game from 10 years ago feel very strange. Maybe because the AI is so strong, humans are playing increasingly more like the AI, so even if you create a human-like AI, humans change so fast that in five years' time, humans would no longer feel the human-like AI natural. It happens often in Go AI. Oh, let me ask you this. When also earlier you asked where AI came from, AI people is a group of diverse humans, but Many think that the human brain is also an AI. <laughs> Did you hear the human brain is AI? What? In short, it is an algorithm. The brain processes information that comes through the sensors, eyes and ears, which moves the body. Brains are doing information processing. Humans are way smarter than the other animals, so humans tend to think about various unnecessary things. But brains are calculating machines. So what they do is uh, rather similar to computers, more or less, executing certain kinds of algorithm. Believing in this, and I have been engaged in my research. Intelligence can be realized by computers. If this is right, if this is right, then um, though no, we have so far discussed how humans and a AI are different, but there should be no difference. Well, AI as a technology, it's still immature, so there are so many things AI cannot do, but if they are being considered as algorithm, they are the same, aren't they? With AI a lot more advanced, and it could be possible to create something like human brains, or 
we should ask ourselves what are the reasons it cannot be done. <laughs> brains can be made. What? Well, uh, if you may say uh, what human brains are doing is not information processing, then computers cannot make it. Oh, the brain was an energy production device, but probably not so. It is actually information processing, I believe. Probably right. Then uh, there is no reason why computers cannot do it. Computers are actually so awesome. Computers can run all the algorithms. The modern computers, I mean to say. If we could assume that what human brains are doing is information processing, then there is no reason why computers cannot do it. That is why I am doing my research. I still have a long way to go. I have to admit, but with deep learning, etc., now, now coming up, and it has come a long way, particularly in the world of Go and the Shogi. <laughs> you will uh, get this point if you uh, take time to read the book by Matsumoto san. Then uh, we have to ask a question what is a human being? If machines and human brains are doing the same thing, then we have to ask this ultimate question, what is a human being, right? Well, uh, machines do not die, but humans die. In your book, uh, you wrote that machines can accumulate data without any limitation, but human brains are limited. Then, though you have not said this far, if AI will surpass human brains or we would say, are there any reason why AI will not surpass human brains? I am quite fond of science fiction and fantasy, by the way. Just like uh, humans are making artificial intelligence, I have an often wondered if uh, our world is a kind of laboratory for some kind of existence, say God. I understand what you're trying to say here. Matrix, for example, yes. Well, uh, after all, here now we are talking about the universe, why our world or the universe is created. The only way for us to understand this question is first, a mythical narrative telling us there is someone externally and the someone is making the universe. Or another way for us to understand is we try to understand this by describing it through mathematical formulas. Then we start on a current intelligence level, uh, we simply cannot find the answer to the question why the world does exist. I have to admit that and this is my latest uh, thinking. What do you think? I had thought AI has already surpassed the human brains. Yes, you're right. Uh, we tend to think that way because an AI has already surpassed the Go players on the Go board. But alas, you are telling us that is not necessarily the case yet. So I was kind of surprised to hear that. In other words, AI is not having a meta level recognition. It is not observing what AI itself is doing. Yes, I see that. To take actions at a higher level, including what AI itself is doing, since this is not going well, so I should try something else. AI, as of now, cannot act like this. Next. Ohai-san, please. Yes, thank you. Looking at the world of Go, I often feel that uh, we are in the microcosm of the AI world. I have been to the matches uh, against AI, in, say, in China and other countries. It was an actually Google DeepMind AI which first surpassed the humans. On those occasions, I sensed the tremendous power coming from the US, UK, and China. I have sensed tremendous excitement coming from other countries. As for Japan, by the way, the number of the participating teams has been rather small. And most of the time, the Japanese people were participating on the individual basis, but China and the U.S. were represented by the groups or by companies. I sensed a big difference in terms of the enthusiasm to all AI between Japan and the other countries. 
I'm wondering if you have any suggestions or any good ideas so that Japan will be able to have a good presence in the AI domain or making its advancement more. Well, uh, it has been the you know, pattern of Japan that, yes, individual researchers and engineers are working really hard. But Japan is always losing due to the lack of military logistics. Are there good reasons why Japan has been lacking in good military logistics? I have always felt that Japan simply is not good at creating mechanism. The same goes to the AI research. Individuals are working really hard, but there is no good mechanism to support them. It is actually the industry which can support them. Both the US and China have very big uh, industries. They have AI-based uh, internet businesses and many you know, different companies. And they are actually supporting AI technology development. Japan does not have such a structure, so the only way to battle is left up to those individuals. Then, what to do is the question. I believe uh, it is quite critical uh, to create uh, such uh, logistics. I believe this is going to be quite important. And another idea is uh, what I call a follower's strategy. Japan is a follower trying to catch up uh, in regard to the AI technology. We need to do whatever we have to do as a follower, for example, now try to copy them, or trial and error efforts, then try to find business opportunities, trying to find something new those ahead of us had failed to discover by repeating trial and error efforts as many as possible. I do believe uh, such an effort is going to be quite uh, necessary. I believe uh, many Go players can well understand this point. About 30 years ago, it was Japan who was the strongest in the world, but then South Korea became quite strong. I believe the situation lasted about 15 years. Then China came along. It is often said that well, each Japanese player has different playing style, but the uh, Chinese and the Korean players are good at the so-called group uh, research, and they all play the same way in the world tournaments based upon the research they have done, the so-called group study. Yes, uh, I also have such an idea. When we study uh, together, we may have a good memory. When a player studies alone, he or she may just deep dive into his or her own moves only, or the moves in that are easily influenced by AI. But when we study together, we should be able to look at not only small points, but also we can pay more attention to the big points. If I may now, here now, I would like to go back to the points we are discussing earlier. According to an Ohai san, it sounds like an, uh, there are no Japanese AI, American AI, and uh, Chinese AI. Sounds like we have AI nationalities. Am I wrong to say that AI's goal is to create human intelligence or something similar to it? If this is the case, there ought to be no nationalities involved. So now I would like to know, say in China, are they thinking in Chinese language and uh, put Chinese-like algorithm? Or in Japan? Is it uh, done in Japanese language? Would you please help me in this regard? It is just like uh, developing car engines. There are countries and businesses uh, which are staying at very high level. What's the difference? It could be found in the way they generate data and how they design network architecture. What are their purposes in using them? How much computing power is available? It is those elements behind the difference. Those highly advanced research institutions in China or the U.S. happen to have many researchers with such a know-how. Their overall level has been so high, believe me, so they can make many different things with high accuracy for so many different goals. They can keep developing new applications one after another. If I may now, I have a follow-up question. Each society has its own issues, but at the same time, there are no common issues for the humanity. I believe AI should be able to address this as well. But Ohai-san earlier mentioned that AI is not necessarily universally common. 
I believe we should have a kind of purpose-built AI, say, which can be used only for Japan. I wonder if you are involved in such an research. Hanada-san, uh, what you have raised depends upon the need for localization. Yes, uh, we have made some advancements on its own uh, in the fields where the localization was critical. Believe me. But a case in point here is Google. Yes, uh, those services can be localized, but the foundation itself is globally common. So we have a structure where only one company does it all. Though it can be localized, but the you know, competition here is so severe that a variety of services will be needed. And uh, in this regard, Japan so far has almost no winning record. I believe uh, there ought to be you know, two types of AI. One type is the so-called generalized AI you know, for the general public versus localized AI. I believe these two types uh, will be needed. In the worst case, the generalized AI, the US in particular has been leading here, will become a standard. Then everybody will be asked to go along with it. Then uh, it may hinder diversity, and it is not going to be good at all. How would you feel about it? Well, unfortunately, it is my understanding that uh, it will go for more generalization. One, I would say the room for a possible localization is going to become smaller and smaller. For example, the medical field had been completely a localized industry. Japan's medical field used to be at high level. But with the medical AI coming up, diagnosis can be done with the data. Then uh, there, will, there will not be much difference between the you know, Chinese uh, diseases and the Japanese diseases. Then uh, China-made AI will come to Japan, and it can be used quite naturally. Then the scope for localization will become much smaller. Ultimately, we need to win in this global competition. Now Europe is speaking up loudly against GAFA. Yes, of course, and, uh, the nowadays and such a movement is uh, gaining uh, the traction globally. But and as a whole, I am under the impression that the so-called global AI is being built. Maybe the world of Go is moving somewhat differently. The Go world seems to be moving into one direction. Correct me if I'm wrong. But well, with AI, everybody is going to be equal, so to speak, vis-a-vis -vis to one piece of information. Well, in the world of Go, uh, each player has uh, his or her own preference between the black pattern versus the white pattern. It is a battle for the preferred philosophy, so to speak. For this particular game, I prefer to go for the white or the black, for that matter. But here, if you look at the AI, it shows the black being 33% and the white being 67%. Such a numerical representation is going to be there. This can be considered as being equal to a certain evaluation. This can be interpreted as something having to do with the globalization. Go AI is becoming available to anyone at any time and any place within the framework of this globalization. With this uh, point in mind, the cost is still expensive, I have to say that. So uh, China or the US, well, the US is not necessarily the case in the world of Go. AI can be used reasonably if the market is large enough. It is so easy to use the AI, then everybody is going to use it flatly, quote unquote. With the, uh, the wider uh, usage, one piece of information is going to get started, uh, spread rather, more and more, creating a flat situation. So, AI is going to spread with uh, such a cost structure. By the way, now, I had a chance of visiting uh, DeepMind, for example, in the UK, on a private basis. 
Then I feel that、um, it will be easier、uh, to build a system in the multi-ethnic society. Japan being an island nation, each individual、uh, person is working hard separately. I remember having read、uh, such a thing、uh, in a certain book. I thought、uh, the AI world and also tends to be like that. It may be the case that society will be more、uh, vitalized if there are a multitude of opinions. And if things are already decided and this is the way it is, then、uh, no further advancement beyond the fixed point. People just stop there. With this in mind, I would say we would be benefited more if there are many different AIs. Now AI is working to break the、uh, conventional wisdom in the world of Go, and it is working into a rather good direction. And people are getting truly excited about it, right? I agree. But if they are all、uh, unified into one, it will become quite boring, won't it? After all these things have been discussed today, what I am now most concerned about is the question: What is a human being? We think the brain is an important part of human beings. Yes, and the. Matsuo-san、uh, is telling us that、um, it is possible to create something similar to the human brains, or it may exceed the brain. What do you think about it? Did you think、uh, it surpassed the brain? Yes, that's what I have thought. Maybe. So, if it is limited to the world of Go, well,、uh, I have thought that AI has already surpassed us generally. In the Olympic Games, judgment is still made by humans, right? I have been wondering why not to leave the judgment to AI. The reason for this could be the judgment result could be different depending upon the country which created the AI. So I have thought. But in any case, you do not feel much odd when we talk about AI possibly surpassing us humans. No, I think AI is going to be more critical than humans, particularly so when it comes to making a judgment. I wonder if you have any specific ideas. Now, wish to have such or such things with AI, or this is what I want AI to do for me. Well, I play piano a little bit, and I like music. There are unfinished music pieces some composers left because they passed away before they were able to complete their works. Why not to have AI to complete those incomplete music? Some. People say that、uh, such an act is going to be、uh, blasphemy, but I am very curious about the incomplete portion. I wonder if AI can do this. If、uh, there is a data available、uh, as for the past goal matches, if I can feed the data、uh, to AI, then、uh, I can compete against those past players, for example. I know、uh, this is somewhat human-centric, but、uh, why not? And、then、uh, I can compete with those great players and masters and from the past. This is going to make me happy, so to speak. A truly new experience. What do you think? Such a future will be possible. It is very interesting, and I think it is going to be possible. But I think、uh, you would be better off、uh, if not to play against an AI that has run the games with records of past masters. Why? The reason is that the AI is probably surprisingly weak. Just like the、uh, record time in、uh, track and field has improved so dramatically over the past 100 years, Go players have evolved and advanced. Now, I think you know、uh, you are at really high point. And if you find out those past players were not that strong, I think you'll be disappointed. So you better not play against them. Well, just one piece of advice from me, if I may. Just to ask the future players, say several hundreds of years later, not to try to compete against the AI who has the records of my Go matches. Well, just in order to protect your dignity. I am with you here now. I would feel really bad when the future Go players find me not so strong at all. Well, in the current world, yes, you are the strongest, but you may turn out to be unexpectedly weak in the future. Well,、uh, how about the, these fields where there is no win and no loss, such as music world we talked about earlier? That may work, but here I'm not 100% sure. The fact that the work is not finished or completed halfway through is actually becoming the source of our creativity or imagination. I see. To give an answer is going to be like、uh, filling up the blank space in the ending of a movie. 
And this blank was there intentionally, right? Fully now con convinced. Yes, it is absolutely not true. We will get fun when we are allowed to imagine or think freely. I think you're right. So it is not the case that you know, we can have AI working on everything. Yes, that is truly convincing. Well, I wish we could go on, but the time is running out. Now it's time for me to close the session. I have, as you see here, prepared those balls. And I would like to ask each one of you to write down your own impression you got out of this discussion we have had, or any wisdom you got, if there is any. If you do not mind, I'd like to share what you have written before we close off the session. I am getting nervous. Thank you indeed. Well, I guess I also have to write something down, so I will. I've done it. So um, this is the summary and expression how in your own words. This is from Ohasan, positive algorithm. Wenasan, humans are awesome. Matsuo-san, the era when AI natives manipulate AI freely. And I wrote, what is a human being? Question. I appreciate uh, your contributions here. And uh, here now I'd like to ask each one of you to briefly explain what you have written here. The most important impactful point I got today was when uh, Matsuo-san said there is no reason AI cannot create brains by using algorithm. When I play Go with Wenosan, I am always uh, impressed by her positive attitude. In my case, for example, I tend to become kind of pessimistic when I am finding my moves are less good compared with AI moves. But Wenosan is different. She would always say, wow, that is such a good move. With such an uh, with that experience with her, I now believe that we humans will be enjoying our life if we could install positive algorithm. In the era of AI, AI will display the information in a very flat way, but uh, we should never forget about being positive as a human being. And I wish to live my life with such a brain. So I wrote positive algorithm. Thank you. How about Wenosan? You wrote humans are awesome. I am truly grateful today. I was able to hear a lot of things that I usually seldom get to hear. After one round of talks, I was actually truly impressed with humans. Humans are making AI, and nowadays humans are making AI based upon their actual demands. So I felt humans are truly awesome. Thank you, Matsuo-san. You have a somewhat longer sentence. People often worry about what's going to happen to the society with the advancing AI. May I say I was truly impressed today with Ohai-san and Ueno-san who are actually using AI in the world of Go. May I remind you that there will be a lot younger generation again after Ueno-san. They are going to actually you know, come forward and uh, they are going to be a lot more AI native people, so to speak. So with this in mind, the society going forward, AI natives will be able to manipulate AI freely and at will. I wrote, what is a human being? Here again, I would like to quote Matsuo-san, telling us uh, human brains are algorithm. When we think about this point to the fullest extent, we will soon realize that all the things around us and humans are not that different at all. As a researcher in the humanities, this is a new question for me. Why we have created a category called human beings and we think we are the same? 
This is truly a new inquiry as a researcher of humanities. Let me cite one example of history. I have thought we are writing history about human beings, but I think it's time for us to think about writing humans, including everybody, animals and plants and humans. Well, so far, you know, all these academic activities have been based upon the traditional assumption of for human beings. Maybe it's time for us to rethink about it. It was back in the 18th and 19th centuries uh, in the Western Europe. Such an idea actually uh, came along. And uh, since then, uh, we are making our uh, assumptions based upon that uh, the, you know, thesis. I think it's time for us to challenge ourselves. Oh, that is going to be quite challenging and difficult. Wow, what's going to happen? So I went through all these points. The reason why I wrote down this question, what is a human being? But the story does not end here. Naturally, what will be happening in the world of gold in five years or ten years so from now would be quite important. But we simply cannot tell how AI and our world will be engaged, say, in five or ten years. No one knows for sure. As of now, we believe uh, human beings is uh, one category, and we are making AI in order to realize our humans' values, or what we humans believe important, or what humans wish to do. Then we always have to ask ourselves, who we are? What is a human being? What are the things we believe in that are values? We have to address these questions all the time when we deal with AI. So uh, it is uh, imperative for us uh, to create a uh, space or an opportunity where uh, we can be engaged in a series of dialogues and discussion together with the experts who are the uh, front runners in the AI world. That said, the we in uh, Tokyo College is uh, uh, be quite happy uh, to continue to make uh, such an effort more actively. That said, I'd like to thank you all for your time and contributions. I am quite grateful. Thank you.